right, good evening, everybody, and welcome to Old Time Baptist Church. Let's go ahead and grab our hymn books and stand. We're going to sing a quick chorus, 188, Happiness is the Lord. True joy is mine, no matter if the teardrops start, amen, page 188. Happiness is to know the Savior living a life within his favor, having a change in my behavior. Happiness is the Lord. On the second, happiness is to new creation, Jesus and me in close relation, having a Happiness is the Lord. Amen. All right, I guess I guess I'm up. Uh, welcome to Old Time Baptist Church, and uh, tonight what we're going to be doing is obviously you see the big choir up here. We just got through a music school Friday night, and then also on on Saturday we did a little bit of work this afternoon, and it's it's a blessing to see all these folks up here, and uh, so many of them put in a lot of hard work. But uh, Brother Cody is our, our drill sergeant, and uh, he's the one that's been uh, put, taking us to task, and uh, it's been a real blessing, and we're excited we're going to come back next year, do it again, and so uh, you'll hear a bunch of different hymns, and I'll let him uh, just interact with you tonight. He's going to speak and so forth, but uh, I know the choir is going to do a couple of songs, and then we'll get you singing a little bit. I think you got the camp meeting song books, so we're looking to have a good night in church tonight, and I hope that you're ready for some singing and to hear some singing, all right? So uh, you can be seated, and we'll call Brother Cody up, and uh, I'll turn it over to you, my brother. Yes. Take a deep breath. Say it's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. Turn to page 222.
Let's go to number four. I see. Hang on, number six. Number six. Six. Page number six. All right, let's all get on on a fun here. Let's grab our hymn books and turn over to page 31. I saw the light. Page 31 in your camp meeting hymn books. Page 31. Let's all stand. Let's all stand. Let's all stand. Thank you. You look too comfortable. There we go. <laughs> 31. I wandered aimless, life filled with sin. I wouldn't let my dear Savior
is page 20. I never shall forget the day. So I was really hoping we could have that symbol crash. Colton's not here. That's too bad. Turn over to page number 20. I never shall forget the day. Page 20. <laughs> On the first, long years ago, when out in sin, I had no hope, no peace within. Down on my knees in agony. What did you do? I prayed to Jesus and He. and some things. So let's have the choir. You can relax for a moment. They've been standing and singing. You can st sit down for a moment, but uh, we're going to open with a word of prayer, and then um, I know uh, Brother B has got some announcements. Always got to have announcements and all that kind of stuff, but it's good to be at a church where there's a lot of things going on. Now, with all these folks up here, a lot of your singers are up here, so it it's feels a little different out there, doesn't it? That's Now it's your job to take over some of that congregational singing, right? Looking over at Ray. Good to see Ray. Let's, uh, let's go to the Lord in a word of prayer. Lord, it's good to be in your house, and we're just having a good time tonight and uh, praising your name. It's good to praise your name. You're worthy. And God, uh, it, it's been a blessing to study music, to be able to just, uh, Lord, uh, emphasize uh, the praise to you that we could do it with all our might, that, Lord, we would do it in, in unity, and God, uh, do it that it would be uh, just sweet music in your ears, and God, I pray that uh, we wouldn't be even performing tonight, but Lord, that we would be singing for you, and God, I pray you bless this group that have worked so hard, Lord, uh, just the last couple of days learning timing, learning music theory, and God, uh, what it means for the next generation and the kids coming up, and God, uh, we're so excited for what you're doing here. I pray you bless the service now in Jesus' name. We ask amen. All right, if you need a bulletin, slip your hand up, and our ushers will get a bulletin to you.
this week. The teens and uh, some adults are going up to Rochester for Youth Ablaze, and uh, we are excited about that. Looking forward to a great time. Next Sunday night, there will be a Sunday school, te uh, Sunday school teachers and helpers meeting after the evening service, and then also next Sunday night, there's a camp meeting pledge night. Please Pray about it this week, what uh, the Lord would have you to do for camp meeting this year. And then our seniors ministry begins on Saturday, March 5th at 10 a.m. in the Fellowship Hall.
All right, let's have our ushers come at this time. We'll take this evening's offering. And that which is in the offering and is undesignated will be the offering for Brother Cody White and his ministry. Appreciate the time that him and his wife are able to be with us. And let's pray. Our Father, we are grateful for the privileges that you've given us. Thank you for this time that we're able to sing unto your name and be able to uh, work with Brother White and being able to see how we can glorify you better and encourage others. Lord, I pray that you please bless this offering and those that give in Jesus' name. Amen. We just need a couple uh, helpers to pass some papers out. They're going to teach you a song. Brother Cody's going to teach the congregation a song. How can it be? Uh, he just threw this one at us today. Um, but we'll follow his lead. It's a great old hymn. <coughs> you got anything else you want to say about this, Brother Cody? There's a When you get it, you'll see there, um, it has the music with it there, but on the second second part on the second score there are some fermatas it's got a little line there's a dot there just watch right there because i will hold you right there cut you off and bring you back in okay so just watch those few little spots right there the choir will is going to volunteer to sing the first verse for you so you kind of get a feel for how it goes and then we'll we'll all join in on the first verse and go through all the verses right choir yes they're volunteers Everybody got a copy? Yes, good. Y'all, come on, let's sing this one on the first. Ready?
Daniel, I couldn't hear you, but I hope you were singing out loud. Yes? Were you singing out loud? No, not really? I hope you all like that's a beautiful. Do you, do you realize what you, you're just talking about? How can it be that he did all that for me? How can it be? If you really get the words to that, O Savior, as my eyes behold the wonders of thy might untold, the heavens in glorious light array, the vast creation thou hast made, how can it be? Oh, my, those are rich words in that song. I hope you enjoy that one. Uh, y'all can learn that as a church, and that'd be great. Good, y'all be seated. Good job, y'all. Okay.
Well, we have had an excellent few days, and um, I surely hope that everybody has enjoyed their self, and, um, and you all sing very well. This has been an absolute wonderful music school, and um, me and my wife just want to say thank you, uh, hospitality, and, um, and just y'all being a blessing. It has been a great day to be here. And, um, but anyway, if you will, uh, take your Bibles and turn to 1 Chronicles chapter 22. Uh, we're just going to talk here just a little bit about music and um, just a little message here. Hopefully it will be a benefit to you. 1 Chronicles 22. Everybody take a deep breath. Let it out. Now, I am never not teaching music school. Okay, so y'all just going to have to be patient with me. I'm not a preacher. I'm not a pastor. I'm just one of those guys, you know what I'm saying? And so, um, and you know, it's okay to laugh in church. Some of y'all right now need to laugh. Everybody take a deep breath. Let it out. All right. So, everybody okay? Yeah, say yes. yes. Say yes. yes. That's a little bit better. All right. So, in First Chronicles... Chapter 22, we'll start in verse 3. It says, let me get over there with you. It says in verse 3, it says, And David prepared. Have you ever prepared some things, ladies? Ladies? Y'all with me, ladies? Have you ever prepared anything? Gentlemen, have you ever prepared anything? Yes. Well, well, it probably wasn't food. Was it? Maybe. Maybe you have, maybe you haven't. Well, it says here, David prepared. And if you go to on, all through this chapter, you see David prepared. David prepared. He did so many things he, he prepared for. And if I were to ask you this question, is music important? Yes. Yes. Amen. Would you say yes? yes. yes. Is music important? Yes. yes. Absolutely. And we know that, that the Lord loves to hear you sing. Would you agree? He loves to hear his children sing. So therefore you should sing. So yes, music is important. So if it is important, what will you do with it? Is the question that I'm going to ask you. Is, is who is going to learn the music? So I know we've been in music school and we've been learning it. But who's going to learn it? You know, growing up in church, and, and I know probably a lot of you may grow up in church and, and, and songs have been passed down and all those things. And, um, but you know, we have to learn that in that hymn book, I don't have one with me, but that music, that's very important. It's very important. You know why? Somebody learned it for you to know how to sing that, right? In order to pass that down, somebody had to be able to read that. Well, if we don't get back to reading that, we're going to be in trouble, Okay. We're going we're gonna to be in, we're in a lot of trouble. And all, I see all these young, young men and young ladies, these little, little fellers. You, did you see them up here singing? That thrills my soul. To see all those little ones up here Amen. singing, those teenagers. Yeah. And they get a hold of this, they're going to love it. Amen. Okay? Yeah. So keep them in it. Um, so if we keep reading there, it says uh, uh, in verse 5. Verse 5 of 20, chapter 22, 1 Chronicles. Everybody with me? And David said, Solomon, my son, is young and tender, and the house that is to be builded for the, the Lord must be exceeding magnificent. Don't you all like that? It, could you imagine what, that's going, what that would be like? Exceeding magnificent? Okay. 
It says, of, frame, uh, of fame and of glory uh, throughout all the countries. I will therefore now make preparations for it. So David prepared abundantly before his death. You know, I was thinking about that as I was studying this and thinking, you know, if David had started preparing when he slung that slingshot instead of all the times he messed up, what if he would have started preparing way back then rather than when he was fixing to die? It's a good question, wouldn't you say? So why don't we start preparing now for what may come down the pike? Y'all get what I'm saying? So if they, y'all know David messed up, really. I mean, he messed up a bunch of times. When maybe he could have avoided that if he would have started preparing back then. Okay? So that's just an example there. But it says he, he prepared abundantly before his death. Then he called Solomon. Now who's Solomon? That's his son, right? He says, and, and, and charged him to build a house for the Lord God of Israel. So that's what I'm doing to you. I'm charging you, church, to keep going in music. Don't let up. We were talking in the Sunday school class. People say, well, you're, you're in a losing battle, brother. Keep going around teaching music in churches. You're in a losing battle. Yeah, and it's a battle. It is a fight that we're in. Right? Fight the good fight, right? Of faith. And that fight that we're in, uh, our, our ministry of teaching, going around teaching music in churches, you say, well, that's, that's a losing battle. All the churches are, are going away from that four-part harmony. They're not singing that any. They're, they're, it, it's on a decline. Yeah, it might be, but I'm going to fight till the end. Until I, until I get to glory. And I'm singing with, in, in the heavenlies, and, but I'm going to fight. You've got to keep fighting. You can't just give up just because somebody says, oh, you're, you, I mean, you know, it's a losing battle. No, you just got to keep fighting. And so, uh, so my charge to you would be to keep fighting. Now, if you go over there in uh, 1 Chronicles 25, go over to 25, chapter 25. Does anybody know? Does anybody know what's going on in chapter 25? Crickets. Say it again. Yes, he's preparing. This is a singing school going on right here. Did y'all know that? This is the first singing school that we see in your Bible. So in verse 25, and does anybody have a date next to chapter 25? What is it? BC 1015. That's what I have, 1015. So remember that, okay? Remember that. Remember that date, 1015 B.C. And it says in verse 1, it says, Moreover, David and the captain of the host separated the service of the sons of Asaph, Heman, and Jeduthun. So what we see here is David is separating these guys in, into different, uh, different sections, different classes, if you will. And it talks all the way through there of the sons of Asaph, Je, uh, Heman, and Jeduthun. And if you go on down there in verse 7, it talks about how many people were in this choir that they were doing as a music school. Does anybody know the number? 288. There were 288 in this music school. I could just imagine. That would be wonderful. <laughs> what do we have here? I think we had about 60, 60 something like that. Could you imagine having 288? That would be wonderful. Okay, so they had the music school here and they broke up into 24 groups of 12 classes. Okay, so that they, they dispersed and they had teachers and they were students and that they taught in this music school. So as time went on there, um, uh, they, they prepared and, and you can study that thing out, but it, it, there's one verse in there it talks about as every day's work, uh, they work continually every day. So I mean, they worked at this, preparing for the, the finishing result of the temple, okay? David saw the importance of music, wouldn't you say? David was a very musical person. And so he, he uh, addressed these men to teach these other men how to sing. And so they did. Um, so let me ask you this question. And I know y'all do good, and I know I'm preaching to the choir here, but what are you preparing for the next generation? You say, oh, well, our church, we're good. We're good, we're good on music. 
were set, I, and I, I tell I ask this all over, but but my question to you is, if you were to ask this question in 20 years from now, or when this pastor's gone to heaven, you say, oh, the Lord will be back by then. Well, Paul said the same thing, right? What are we preparing for the next generation when it comes to music? Remember, this is the topic here, okay, is music. So when a uh, pastor is off the scene, what will you be singing here at Old Time Baptist Church? Yeah. It's something to think about. Yeah. It really is. Because you know how fast that could change? Yeah. Literally overnight it could change. Just like that. And who's standing for what you have here right now? We've got to stand for some things, right? It's a fight. It's a fight that we're in. And one word that I think about is cultivation. Go over to Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 31. Deuteronomy 31. Everybody okay? Amen. If you start to fall asleep, you're welcome to stand up. It doesn't bother me. Uh, we talk about breathing in, uh, in music school. And, um, and sometimes when you yawn, that doesn't bother me either. It just means that your brain's saying, hey, dummy, you need to, you need to take some air in. You're sitting there not breathing correctly. Okay? All right, so anyway. All right, go to, go to Deuteronomy 31. Let's read in verse 19. It says, everybody there? 31, 19. It says, Now therefore write ye this song for you and teach it the children of Israel. Put it in their mouths that this song may be a witness for me against the children of Israel. Verse 20. For when I shall have brought them into the land which I swear unto their fathers, that floweth with milk and honey, and they shall have eaten and filled themselves and waxed fat, waxen fat, then will they uh, uh, turn unto their gods and serve them and provoke me and break my covenant. Verse 21. And it shall come to pass when many evils and troubles are befallen them that this song, what song? What song are we talking about? The song that he was to teach them. Right? That song that he said, that song, I want you to write that down and I want you to teach it to your children. Put it in their mouth, teach it to them. Because there's going to come a day when they get on the milk and honey and they are fat and they're sick and tired of everything and they start serving their other gods. That sounds like America to me. Doesn't it? Yes. And it says right here, it says that this song shall testify against them as a witness, for it shall not be forgotten out of the mouths of their seed. For I know their imaginations which they go about even now before I have brought them into the land which I, I uh, swear. So if you teach them now, guess what? They're going to be singing it when they're old. Do you hear me? You teach it to those little ones, even you older ones. It's okay to learn too. You say you can't teach an old dog new tricks. Yes, you can. Oh, yeah, you can. I'm going to prove it here in just in a minute. Um, but back in the, just a quick uh, lesson or uh, overview here, back in the 1700s, early 1900s, music schools was a tool to help people use uh, music to praise God. It, uh, it was the greatest time ever, I would, I would say, for the best hymns that we have today. Um, and did you know that God can preserve His hymns? Did you know that? Everybody say yes. yes. Okay. Just making sure you're awake. Music schools declined. They started declining in the 1900s. And so did music in the local church. In the 1960s, does anybody know what happened in the 1960s around the hippie movement? Y'all know what I'm talking about? The hippies and the Jesus movement. Y'all, does anybody recall that? Uh, the rock and roll and all that stuff started happening. And, and, and so things started declining in America. Started going downhill. Well, I'm trying, to do, I'm trying to do this. And I can see in this church that you are sticking by the stuff. Okay? You're staying right there. That's good. That's a blessing. Keep it up. I'm, I'm charging you here. Okay? Y'all with me? All right. So, um, let's see here. 
One reason that I like the hymns, one reason that I love the hymns is because Jesus loves them. And I can prove it. I've got two, two sets of scripture. Matthew 26, 30. You don't have to go there. Just write it down. Matthew 26, 30 and Mark 14, 26. Those are two places where it says Jesus and we're talking about him and his disciples. They went out and what they do? They what? They sang a hymn. So that tells me that Jesus must like hymns. I want to like things that Jesus likes. Don't you? Well, you should. I surely hope so. Um, but did you know that the devil knows exactly what he's doing when it comes to the subject of music? In Ezekiel 28, it gives us a little insight of the devil. And did you know that he was considered the cherub, one of the cherubs there in heaven? And he was, I believe he was a musical being. We have just a small insight of, of, of what, that, what that creature was. And I believe dearly, that believe that he was a musical being. So let me ask you this. If he was a musical being in heaven, now he's, now he's you know, Satan and he's the wicked one and all this other stuff. If he knows music, don't you reckon he knows how to get to you when it comes to music? Don't you reckon that he does not want you to learn music? He wants you to say, oh, it's just not for me. I just, I can't get it. I can't learn it. No, I can't learn it. Excuses. It really is. I, I hear it all over the place of excuse. Now, I know some of y'all are getting mad at me right now. I can see it. Y'all okay? Amen. Yes. It's excuses. Let me show you an example. Anybody got a cell phone in here? Does everybody have a cell phone in here? Not in here, but do you have a cell phone? Does anybody in here not have a cell phone? Well, I know you kids don't, but I'm talking about the adults here. Okay? Well, y'all remember when it was the, uh, the old uh, uh, thing that was in the car, the, the bag phone? Remember that? Then, you, does anybody know what the rotary phone was? Remember that? Yes. Some of you kids have no clue what I'm talking about. <laughs> then you remember there was the, the long phone. You know what I'm saying? The long cell phone had the antenna that was that long. And then, it, then there was that, the phone that flipped over. And then there was another one that flipped halfway. And then it just kept going, right? And then they finally come out with one that you touched. It was just a touch screen. Some of y'all don't remember what it was like not to have a touch screen phone. And some of y'all, I guarantee, some of y'all said, I will never have one of those. But you got one. Don't you? And you said, I'll never learn, I'll never be able to learn how to do all this stuff on this phone. But you do. It's a want to. It's a want to. Colossians chapter 3 verse 16 says, Let. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms, hymns, spiritual songs. Yes? It, the first word of that says let. That's a choice. You have to do it. Nobody else can do it for you. You have to let it. Let the word of Christ dwell in, the, in you richly. Okay? So, with that said, let's keep going. We, we, of course, uh, back on that, we have a lazy society. You know that? I mean, I, I just hate to tell you that, but we do. A lazy society, a lazy generation that we're in. We have no idea. We were at the pastor's house today talking about a play that y'all did. Uh, and it was, uh, 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 what was it called? Resistance. Resistance. Y'all remember that? Yeah. And we have no idea what that was like what those people went through. We are weak compared to what those people had to go through, right? And the things that they did in order to, to navigate, in order to keep their Bible, in order to, to keep their, 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 uh, their faith, in order to keep their, their unction about them, about the Lord. You know, it would have been easier just to throw in the towel and say, we just can't do this, right? But they had the underground stuff going on, all this different stuff. And we have it so easy in America. You say, oh, well, we're in New York, though. 
we have all the restrictions and COVID restrictions and we can't do this and we can't do that and we can't have a, a gun magazine over 10 rounds and we can't do this. and we That's petty stuff, really. It really is. It's really petty. In the light of, of, of persecution and all the things that the martyrs and whatnot went through, God has been good to us. Why should we not be, why should we not give back to Him so much more? So let's keep going here. One, one quote here says, one, What one generation tolerates, the next generation will embrace. I'll say that again. What one generation tolerates, the next generation will embrace. You say, Well, brother Cody, the Old Testament, those Old Testament singers, they were skillful and, you know, they were selected and all that. That's correct but they still had to learn the music somewhere down the line. Do you get what I'm saying? And, and number two on that is that they not only did they have to learn the music, but it, you said it was for the temple, yes. I believe there's a verse out there in 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 19 says something about you being the temple. Does it? Well, let's read it. Some of y'all don't, I don't know if y'all know what that says. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19, it says, What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own, for ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. <clears throat> yes? What did he just say? He dwells in you, right? So if he dwells in you, why should you not glorify Him in song and learning how to do these things, okay? All right, everybody okay? Now, if we go on over there, let's go to, um, <clears throat> let's go over to 2 Chronicles chapter 5. 2 Chronicles chapter 5. Everybody with me? 2 Chronicles chapter 5. It says, Thus, I'm skipping some of this here because I just want you to want you to see that they had a music school over there in First Chronicles. Now we're over to Second Chronicles chapter five. Now let me ask you this: in in your in in Bible study here, in Second Chronicles chapter five, where's David? Yes, he died, didn't he? Yes, he's no longer on the scene. Who took over? Solomon, okay? So in verse 1 it says, Thus, all the work that Solomon made for the house of the Lord was finished. You know, I bet you David would have loved to have seen that. Wouldn't he? But Solomon, when he took over, remember, David charged him. He said, Son, this is what I want you to do. Right? Okay? So it says, Thus all the work was finished, and Solomon brought in all the things that David his father had dedicated and the silver, and the gold, and the instruments, put he among the treasures of the house of God. So you remember that verse back there in Deuteronomy? It talked about putting that song in those young people and, 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 and yes. making them do something. It's okay, okay? <laughs> it's okay to have your children learn how to do this, how to learn to read the music and, and whatnot. Because when they get older... They're going to remember that, and they're going to apply it. All right. So if you keep, does anybody have a date right here? What is it? Three years later, one thousand twelve. One thousand twelve. Well, I've got one thousand five. Anybody else got one thousand five? No, we're at Second uh, Chronicles chapter five. I'm sorry. Okay, so we're approximately ten years, give or take. Okay, just a few. So we're at 10 years here. Let's go on down to verse 13. Came to pass as the trumpeters and singers were as one, making one sound to be heard in praising and thanking the Lord. And when they lifted up their voice with the trumpets and cymbals and instruments of music <clears throat> and praise the Lord, <clears throat> saying, what'd they say? For He is good, for His mercy endureth forever, that the house then... I'm sorry, that then the house was filled with a cloud, even the house of the Lord. I like this. You know, the Lord puts things in there 
He didn't have to, but he did, just so we could enjoy this part. In verse 14 it says, So that the priest could not stand to minister by reason of the cloud, for the glory of the Lord had filled the house. Now, let me ask you this question. If they didn't have that music school, and they had no idea what they were doing in that music program, do you, do you think that the Lord might have showed up? I'm, I'm just asking a question. I'm, I mean, I want you to think about it. They worked at it. Yes? They work and they work and they work and they work and then approximately 10 years later, it got to singing and it got so good in there that the Lord showed up and the preacher couldn't even preach. It got so good. That could happen here. It could happen at the church down the road. It can happen at the church in Tennessee or wherever it might be, but we've got to be willing to work at it. Do you, do you get my, my point here? Very good. So, I'm going to skip some of this just because it, it, it might take me a while to get through it. But if you read over in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, in verse 10, it talks about, in verse 14 and 15, all things, all things um, uh, that, well, let me go over there. Let me just read to you. You don't have to. I'll go over there if you don't want to turn. I hope you like to turn the pages of your Bible. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, in verse 10 says, in verse 10 it says, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that every man may receive the things done in his body according to that which he hath done, whether it be good or bad. So in other words, you can do good things and you can do bad things and we will be judged for it. Okay? It says, Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. But we are made manifest unto God, and I trust also are made manifest in your consciences. And let me go on down there to verse 14. It says, For the love of God constraineth us, because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we are all dead. That word all, I like that word all. Don't you? It says, and that he died for all. If you go on down there, it says in verse 17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold what? All things are become new. Wait a minute. You said all things. That includes music. Yes? All things. Music is included in that. Okay? Okay. So if all things, and, and if you keep on reading down there, it talks about being ambassadors for Christ and represent your representation for Christ. So how you sing, you represent Him. Yes? So should we not do better and better and better and better when it comes to music? Absolutely. So uh, let's see here. Whatever a person allows to occupy his or her mind sooner or later be, uh, determines his or her speech and actions. Let me read that again. It says, Whatever a person allows to occupy his or her mind will sooner or later determine his or her speech and actions. So, whatever you let in here will get in here and sooner or later will come out here. Are you hearing me? So we had the conversation going on um, sometime the past few days of, of how we get our children to, to like singing, like singing hymns and do-re-mis and all this other stuff. Well, what we allow them to put in here will eventually get to here. Amen. Amen. And then it'll get to here. You see what I'm saying? And then when, not only that, but they like to see what mommy and daddy's doing. Right? They, they look at mommy and daddy and say, well, mommy and daddy's not doing that. But they're doing this. They're going to they're gonna follow your footsteps, daddy. They're going to do pretty much what you tell them to do. So why not tell them to learn music? I'm just saying 
Okay. Good. Y'all, everybody take a deep breath. Let it out. Excellent. Excellent. So if I were to say this, why do we do our best for fill in the blank? But what about music? Sometimes, you know what we do? We just give God the leftovers. Don't we? We just, here you go, God. That, that's for you, but all this over here is mine. So there you go. Just give him the leftovers. Um, and, and I, you know, I hear this everywhere I go. People say, and actually I was in a church not too long ago. There was a lady that was very distraught about music school. She said, there's no reason to do this. Why, why would we do this? You're just supposed to sing from the heart. Well, that's partially true, yes. You are supposed to sing from the heart. But shouldn't we do our best? And, you know, people say, well, you're just supposed to get up there and what was it you said the other day? Where's your daughter at? Just let it rip, tater chip? Yeah? Just get up there and let it go. Well, that's kind of, a, in a sense, a cop-out for doing your best for Him. And, and you say, well, what do you mean here? Let me remind you of something. Let me remind you of something. Go over to, I'm just about done, believe it or not. Go over to Isaiah 53. Let me remind you of something. Isaiah 53. Brother, out loud, will you read the first three verses? Comeliness. Comeliness and, and when we shall see him, there's no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected. Stop right there. What did that verse say? He's despised and rejected of men. He's despised and rejected of men. Who are we talking about? Jesus. Okay, keep reading. In verse 4 it says, Surely he hath bore our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for whose? Our. Our transgressions. Let's keep going. It says, uh, smitten of God, but he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for who? Our iniquities, the chastisement of our peace was upon Him, and with His stripes we are healed. All, there's that word again, yep. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to His own way. And the Lord had, hath laid on Him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and He was afflicted, yet He opened not His mouth. He's doing all this for you. Amen. Are you hearing what this is saying right here? He's doing this for you. Let's keep going. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shearers in, is dumb. So he openeth not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment, and who shall declare his generation? For he was cut out of the, the land of the living, for the transgression of my people was he stricken. And he made his grave with the, the, the wicked and with the rich his death, because he had done no violence, neither was there any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. It says, He hath put him to grief. Grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in, in his hand. He shall, I like this verse right here. Listen now. He shall see the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied. Who shall be satisfied? God. Satisfied with what? His son. And what he did on the cross. For who? You. And if you keep on reading down there all the way through 12, I just want to remind you 
that there was a man named Jesus Christ that died on a cross for you. He gave His all. Why should we not give our all? When it comes to anything, living for Him, singing for Him, learning the music, learning the Bible, whatever it is, give your all because He gave His all. Watch this. This is... This is I love this. If you look in after everything that we just talked about, about Jesus Christ and what He did, look at the first word of chapter 54. Somebody tell me what it says. Sing. sing. Why should we sing? Because He's worthy. Is He not? Is He worthy? Everybody say yes. yes. I'm done, preacher. Let's all stand. We'll have a verse of invitation. It's been a full day, and um, appreciate the admonition. You know, it takes work to to keep singing and to keep the next generation singing. And I want to encourage you to make the effort. I try to teach uh, those that are coming up under us. It's as important as teaching your kid to read, because we are commanded to praise the Lord. And so uh, they're really struggling when they don't know how to sing. A lot of us uh, grew up, and I know many of you, you didn't know how to sing and, and all that kind of thing. Uh, but it is, it is a wonderful blessing. And so let's be determined. Let's commit ourselves to this task. Appreciate all the hard work, great hard work this, this week by 60-something folks coming and uh, learning music. But uh, we'll have a little time of prayer. Maybe the Lord would touch your heart to make a difference. Some of you have a, a background in music in some way, shape, or form. Pass it on to someone else. Help someone else. Some of you are saying, oh, I don't know if I could do this, or I don't know if I can uh, steer them. I'm not good at music. Uh, you, you'd be amazed what you might do if you just uh, get along with God and say, Lord, show me. Show me how to do it. Some of you got saved late in life, and you're trying to raise your kids for the Lord, right? And so, uh, hey, keep on going. You can't say, uh, well, I got saved late in lights, so uh, I guess I have nothing to teach the next generation that's coming up under me. No, we have to keep going. So let's sing a verse of invitation, and just as the Lord leads, uh, we'll just follow him tonight. Page 57 in your Camp Meeting Handbooks.